So what's a biofilm? Well, that's a good question. Uh, there's many different uh, definitions of biofilm, uh, but basically uh, mo most microbiologists will agree it's, uh, it's a group of bacteria that are attached to some kind of surface. Does it make a film always? Yeah, well, yeah, roughly speaking. I mean, they're either attached to a surface, which could be in an infection, could be bone. It could be, but it can also be the surface of water and so on. I mean, well, the way I like to think about biofilms is it's where bacteria grow in a really dense environment, and they sort of encase, they secrete things, they encase themselves in it, and they create their own little sort of micro world to live Sounds in. expensive to be secreting things. It is but expensive. I think, yeah, I think they invest a lot of energy in these things, but they're also very well protected in there. And so, so is that things that they're doing for the good of the group or for their own benefit? Uh, a bit of, you know, a bit of both. Um, so there's definitely uh, some things they will do for the good of their, certainly their clone mates. So if they're genetically identical, then basically evolutionarily speaking, they can act like a uh, a bit like a multicellular organism. So how organism. can they do things that are nice for their family members? Oh, so, I mean, a good example would be uh, making an enzyme. You do release an enzyme into the environment, it breaks down some kind of food stuff that you can't eat normally. Or the back of your throat for a streptococcus, perhaps. So. Yeah, yeah, it could also be there, yeah, unfortunately, that's right. So mm. they, a lot of the ways that these biofilms and uh, 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 bacteria form uh, in the context of infection and, and problematic environments. And uh, yeah, we certainly have a lot of problem fighting them when they're in a biofilm, and that's the big advantage. They so on, on a themselves. heart valve, for instance, it's a desperately problem. I mean, the antibiotics can't get at them. That's right, that's right. They form multiple layers of cells. Um, the antibiotics can, uh, can penetrate to some extent, but it's the cells on the outside that will tend to suffer. The cells on the inside aren't growing. And that's a big problem for antibiotics. Antibiotics target growing cells predominantly. So biofilms make everything sluggish and slow down, mm -hmm. and that makes them a real nemesis. So I was a part of a group a while back that was trying to figure out ways of interfering with the cooperative tendencies of bacteria so as to break down the biofilm so the antibiotics could get in. Has anything come of that? Uh, I mean, we don't, there's no drugs yet on the market, but um, I mean, I'm involved with projects where we're doing that, and it does seem right? to work, yeah. So we can indeed. Uh, inhibit a uh, biofilm, so the adhesion that holds the cells together. And in doing so, we can disrupt biofilms uh, in a way that wouldn't be possible with just simple antibiotics. So do you disrupt so. the proteins that hold them together, or do you also attack the signaling molecules that they use to tell each other what to do? So certainly some people are interfering with the way the bacteria communicate with each other. So they bacteria display communi sorry, coordinated responses uh, under what's often called quorum sensing, which allows them to do everything in synchrony. Wait, what's quorum sensing? Mean. Um, yeah, so that's a good question. So quorum sensing is basically a trick, a clever trick that bacteria have to assess the density of, of the cells in their environment. And the way they do that is they throw out small, inexpensive molecules into the environment. If there's a lot of cells around, then the concentration of those molecules will be high, and they can detect that. And so there's enough of us, let's act as a group. Exactly. And it's, uh, again, it's very important in infection. So uh, things like MRSA, um, the sort of problematic. What's, what's that? So that's... Uh, Methicillin uh, resistant. Staph aureus, yeah, exactly. Staphylococcus aureus. So this is one of the sort of superbugs people uh, worry about in hospitals. So the way that that um, evades our immune system, at least in part, is by coming in quietly. So basically, it'll, it'll go through a breach uh, in, in the skin or somewhere, find its way to a bone surface, form a biofilm. And in all this time, it's not really doing that much. So you but don't then, even know you have an infection, maybe? Well, the immune system, it, exactly, it's under the radar. But huh. then at some point, when it has enough cells and the quorum sensing is activated, then it engages its, its attack. So if we could disrupt that quorum sensing, that might be a great thing. It, and it is something that people are trying to do. The big challenge is having the drug there at the time, you know, at the right time in the right place. And that can be challenging because it's a specific, you know, stage in the infection process. And normally we treat diseases only once we see symptoms. Right. So the problem is prophylaxis, as it's called. You'd have to, to make this work well, the concern is you'd have to keep people on drugs ahead of time, which sometimes is appropriate. For but surgery it's a challenge. or something sometimes. It, maybe, yeah, but it's a yeah. challenge. So do all microbial biofilms have just one species of bacteria or there's some way multiple different species can get together to do things? Well, certainly a lot of biofilms form uh, with multiple species present. And indeed, um, polymicrobial disease, as it's called, is a real thing. And it's where you have an infection where there's multiple uh, strains present. And there's, there's... So that's quite different from our standard medical thing of find out what bug it is. Exactly, exactly. This is a, this is a, you know, yes, a major, major problem uh, for, for uh, diagnosing and treating disease if there's multiple different uh, uh, species contributing to a particular uh, 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 disease trait. Um, 
But yeah, so, okay, so if one's gram negative, are they all probably gram negative, or we no, get diversity? No, you can have real diversity, and, and that's that, a, that makes it hard. It can do, yes. I mean, broad spectrum antibiotics are one option, but um, certainly understanding what these guys are doing and how they're there is important.